Hi, I'm Stephen, and welcome to Audio Nautica. In this video, I want to show you my JBL Studio monitors. These are four double three one A's, but if you're looking closely and you know these speakers, you will have already noticed that these have actually been upgraded to three ways. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I went about doing that, and how you can end up with true high-end audio without spending a huge amount of money. But firstly, a bit of the history of these speakers. These were given to me by a very good friend. And their history is that they came from the ABC, that's the Australian Broadcasting Commission, radio studios in Brisbane. Uh, a number of years ago, they had a cancer cluster there. Um, to the point where the staff refused to work there. So they closed the site, moved to a new site, and they sold the land for a fortune that's on the Brisbane River. And so these came up uh, when the studios were being cleaned out. So these are a very, very historic pair of studio monitors because they graced the recording studios of ABC Brisbane. These would have monitored uh, performances by the Queensland Symphony Orchestra and various other groups. But on with it. Firstly, about what these speakers are. So JBL obviously had a professional series and these are professional series speakers as opposed to their domestic speakers. So essentially the, the closest that you would get to in the domestic series was the L300. Basically it has the, the domestic equivalent of the same drivers there more or less the same specs. They might as well even be the same speaker. I don't know how differently they are in terms of manufacture. They have different model numbers. They don't have professional uh, model number stickers on them, but the specs are basically the same. So the L300 um, had the same more or less drivers as this. Then there's the L100, which was kind of a, a smaller um, domestic speaker, but it was people absolutely raged about that speaker. And they re released the L100 um, a few years ago. Just to give you an idea, here in Australia, the L100 retails for, wait for it, Australian dollars 8,500 if you were to go to a shop now and pay retail price for an L1, L100. So the L300 hasn't been re-released, I don't know whether they're going to, but that gives you an idea as to where this speaker um, kind of sits. So this speaker would be about 1978 vintage. And uh, when these came to me, um, the, the woofers were out of them. The um, surrounds had all um, perished. The dust cones were past their best. So I had to have... Um, the foam replaced and the dust cones replaced. That cost me $382. And also one of the horns developed an intermittent fault. Um, so I had that fixed for $132. Uh, and also um, when it came to me, these uh, mounting clips that hold the woofers in, they had been lost in transport. But the great thing about these is all the bits and pieces, there's people out there who make new equivalents. So these little clips, um, I can't remember where I got them from, but they're quite easily found. Get the clips and you can get the mounting screws uh, and all the other various bits and pieces that are inside the cabinet um, are quite available as well. So these speakers are rated at 75 watts uh, from 35 to 20 kilohertz. They're a really, really sensitive speaker, uh, 93 dB. The crossover frequencies is uh, 800 hertz and 8.5 kilohertz. Now, the reason why I've been able to upgrade this to a three-way speaker is because the 4331A, which you can see that this is what these are, and the 4333A, they use the same enclosure. So the enclosure is a 4503A-1. Now, there was an option with the enclosure for uh, a timber finish, 
basically still the same shape as you can see it's very very box like this thing um, the the timber finish ones are, are more desirable but these were free so I'm not complaining um, but the Japanese absolutely rage over these things and so even though this particular pair look as ugly as sin there you know they're really beaten up there's you know bits of paint missing here and there um, in, in Japanese hands these enclosures would be completely refurbished and I may get to that one day um, step one was to get these sorted electrically to get the bits and pieces I mean the lenses were missing as well uh, no lenses when it came to me so step one was to get these sorted um, electrically step two is mechanically so I've only got one I've only got one grill the other grill um, had been lost at some point as well so I've got to get one of those um, made up and um, also I've got these things and this isn't where they sit normally obviously but they sit on the floor um, which is probably not ideal so I should get some kind of a stand made for these as well uh, all the manuals and so on are, are available on the internet and I mentioned that these are really really efficient um, there's a warning notice that comes in the manual sound pressure levels produced by the 4331A or 4333A may cause permanent hearing loss I like a speaker that has that kind of a warning fantastic so we're just having a look now and at some of the bits and pieces in a bit more detail so this is the lens um, there's a mob in Japan these are obviously quite fragile and they're plastic and easily broken there's a mob in Japan called Kenrick Sound that sells all sorts of bits and pieces for JBL so they make a, a reproduction of these um, but I really wanted to have the genuine article so um, these came up on eBay I can't remember how much I paid for them um, but the 2308 is the professional one and there's a domestic part it'll it's exactly the same thing but it has a different sticker and the part number I can't remember what it is um, but it's all available on the internet as the part numbers so I got two of these when this came to me I didn't have those so step one I got them going but they're very very beamy without the lenses without the diffraction lenses so beamy basically means that coming out of the horn the the sound that's coming out of the horn is, is very directional so if you move your listening position with reference to the beam that's why it's called beaming um, there'll be a very noticeable change in volume I was really impressed with um, the high frequency response out of this compression driver and horns um, they're they're rated up to I think it's about 17 kilohertz or so without the tweeter but the the tweeter certainly has made a a, a great difference so um, the tweeters are more or less new in box um, can't guarantee that they're actually new they weren't a sealed box but they came with their boxes and they look new I paid probably a bit more than I should have I paid a thousand dollars Australian for the two tweeters the 2405s but all the other ones that I'd seen coming up they looked really beat up and yeah they probably would have worked but they looked like they'd had a hard life and um, I wanted something to go in here that looked in much better shape than the ones I saw so I paid that and now um, I'm going to tell you how I upgraded these to three ways so the same enclosure is used for the 4331A and the 4333A the only thing that is different is obviously the tweeter is fitted you see the enclosure has these um, blanking plates there's two sets of holes and there's blanking plates so um, out comes a blanking plate and um, the tweeter goes in so the only other difference is is the crossover so on the 4333A obviously this speaker is different and there's two sets of um, adjustments here for the crossover frequencies 
So I thought about um, seeing if I could find the proper crossover. Um, I never found one, and I think if I did, it would have been heinously expensive. But JBL also made a bunch of crossovers, and that's what you're looking at here in the back of this unit. This is a 3106 genuine JBL crossover. It is intended precisely for this kind of application. That is, it is intended to um, drive a 2402 or a 2405 tweeter um, coupled with a compression driver. So uh, coincidentally, and perhaps not coincidentally, you might also notice that it fits perfectly into the hole in the back of the speaker, which really makes me think that you know, someone had this in mind all along. Um, so I'll show you when I take it apart where the plate is for when this was two-way. But basically I've just put in the 3106 crossover. Here's the cable from the amplifier and here's the outputs. So this is going straight to the tweeter, um, the HF, and the LF goes to the input of the original crossover. So basically what I'm doing is sending all the high frequency to the tweeter and sending the rest to the speaker as it was before. So it's kind of basically like putting a tweeter before the 4331A, except all the electronics or the crossovers is, is inside the enclosure. So um, this is about as, as close as you could get to being genuine. I mean, it is genuine in the sense that all of the parts are still JBL parts. Another option would be to go with your own crossover. There are some designs out there. There's a design um, by Nelson Pass, which is an L300 crossover. And as I said, the L300 is basically the same thing. So if you wanted to build a crossover, you could build that, and I'm sure you'd have excellent results with it. But I decided that I didn't want to build a crossover, um, so that's why I sourced this uh, 31. 06 um, from, from eBay. So let's take this thing apart and have a look inside. Okay, so I've taken out this massive 15 inch woofer and really these drivers are what make these speakers. I mean these were excellent drivers in 1978 and they are excellent drivers now. You only need to see the kind of prices that these things sell for on their own. Sadly, many of these speakers get broken down um, because people can get more money by selling the speakers, selling the, the driver elements as they are, rather than as a complete speaker, which is terribly uh, sad. I mean, yes, these things are really ugly, but they are fantastic speakers, and I, I don't really see how you could do better by um, assembling these into your own enclosures. So anyway, that's the 15 inch 2231A woofer. Now, if we have a look inside, let's try to get ourselves a bit of an angle here. There is the plate that is normally on the back. So basically what I've done is um, I've just cable tied it into a couple of the bracing ribs. So as I mentioned, electrically, this is exactly the same as it was, except that it's got um, an extra crossover upstream. Okay, I've had to go hands-free here just to so that we can get in there. So there's the standard two-way crossover, and then you can see up there, that's the back of the 3106 crossover that I've put in. So normally that plate would be mounted where that is. And then if we have a look up there, there we are, there's the compression driver. So a stunning piece of equipment. There's the horn, and I'm, I'm not going to take the tweeter out, but there's the front of the tweeter. 
But yeah, these um, compression drivers and horns, the, um, when I took it to Speaker Hospital to have the faulty one repaired, the, um, the owner was floating around and he was commenting that this was basically the best compression driver horn combination that JBL ever made. So I'll take that um, as a compliment. So there we are. This is what my three-way, two-way JBL 4331As look like. And as you see, as you see, especially if you decide to use um, JBL standard parts, it's actually not that hard at all to upgrade one of these to three ways. There's a few articles around on the internet that I researched beforehand, um, and none of the approaches really tickled my fancy, mainly because of the crossover approach. So I'm really, really happy with this 3106 solution. Um, it's certainly the simplest way to go. And as I said, you're using entirely factory parts. Uh, and it's, it's meant that I've ended up with what is now equivalent, more or less, to 4333A, three-way JBL studio monitors. These are absolutely fantastic speakers, and they are a joy to listen to. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I really look forward to reading your comments. Until next time. Bye for now.